I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will understand how to sketch graph of antiderivatives that's the whole idea so the question here is the graph of f a function is given make a rough sketch of an antiderivative f given f0 is equal to 3 so I've actually not given a graph here but I'll sketch one for you but let's understand the question itself it says graph of the function is given and we meet, uh, we need to uh, sketch a rough graph of antiderivative. So basically, you can treat that the graph of a derivative is given. So we can treat this as graph of derivative is given and we need to sketch the function sketch the function now does it make sense so let's read through this question once again does it mean this the graph of f is given make a rough sketch of antiderivative f right so 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 we need to make a sketch of antiderivative what i'm saying here is graph of derivative is given and we need to sketch the function. So, so what I'm saying here is that graph of derivative is given, which is f of x, and we need to sketch the function. Do you see that part? So that means we are given this, and we need to sketch f of x. So we need to sketch f of x, right? So it is, it is what the statement is saying graph of derivative is given now this f of x is anti-derivative of f dash x do you get an idea so graph of f is given graph of f is given make a rough sketch of an anti-derivative f one more thing initial condition is that f of 0 equals to 3 that means this graph pass through I should say start from when we say Make a rough sketch of antider given f0, so we know it passed through point zero 0.03. Okay. So the idea here is first to understand the question and then we move about it, right? So, because I find students really getting confused with these statements. So, let's understand it once again. The graph of f is given, make a rough sketch of an antiderivative f given f0 equals to 3. Right. So it means really that you are given graph of the derivative and you want the function. Do you see that? That's what it is. So let's see how to do it. Right. So let me uh, sketch one here and then we'll go about. Actually, I wanted to give you a function here, but then I changed my mind. So, so that's how it is. Sometimes it works. Okay, so what I will do here is that I'll give you the graph of the derivative and from there you need to sketch the graph of the function okay so that's the exercise for you so let's say that the graph of the derivative is kind of like this Let, let's just sketch like this okay let's see this is the graph of the function so we are saying this is the graph of the function f of x right so this is our x-axis that's the graph of the function f of x and we need to sketch the function now since since this is a function we want antiderivative we can treat this as a derivative and we want the function same step right okay now to let's put some values here uh, okay let's take very easy values okay 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 so let's say this is one this is two this is three and let's say this is four how does it matter okay let's say this is four this is five good so uh, y value says so this is 5 okay doesn't matter uh, okay this is minus 5 in that case so let's say this is the graph of the function f of x which we are saying is actually the derivative and we need to sketch the graph of the function f of x what we know here is that uh, the derivative passes through point 0, 0.03 so so 0, 0.3 will be will be here so that is the starting point for our graph right we, since we are going to the right side it becomes the starting point in this particular case 
is this concept clear to you? You can actually pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. That would be a good idea. Okay. Now, let's analyze this function's derivative and sketch the graph of antiderivative. Okay. So, basically, what we are given here is, uh, uh, let me just uh, sketch it on the right side, the information which is going to help us to, to figure this out. So, so what we are given here is, is something like this. <clears throat> we'll analyze this graph now. We are analyzing the graph of the function f of x. So what is happening here is that the it is negative from 0 to 1. So let me write these values, which are 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Right. So this is 1, this is 2, 3, and 4, and let's say this is 5, and so on. Okay? So what we see here is that the value of the function is negative in this interval, right? So it's negative. And then it is a positive, right? From 1 to 3. So let me write positive. And then it's negative like this, right? And thereafter, it is negative. So that's how we see that this function is. We also see that at 1, the function changes from negative to positive, right? So if it changes from negative to positive, that means we're treating this as the derivative. So rate of change. So this is the rate of change, right? So rate of change is from negative to positive. That means at one we have a minimum. Is it okay? So we have a minimum. Now, we also see that at two, if I draw a tangent line, I get zero. Do you see that? So, so what I see here is that at two, it is zero. So that means the second derivative, if I'm taking this as the rate of change, in that case, which is f dash x. Do you see that? So in that case, now here at two, f double dash x is zero. Do you see that? And you also see that the graph is kind of concave down. Do you see that? Since it is concave down, we see that the rate of change second function, f double dash x, is positive to negative. Do you see it changes? Since this changes from, from, let me write here, from positive to negative. This slope here, slope here is positive and slope here is negative. Do you see that? Positive to negative, it means we have a point of inflection here at this point. Perfect. Now, as we move at 3, from positive it becomes negative. That is capital F dash X. So at 3, it moves from, so from 2 to 3, it is positive. Do you see that? From 2 to 3, it is still positive. We're talking about, this is about F dash X, correct? It's positive, but at 3, it changes to negative. That means we have a maximum here. Do you see that? So at 3, we have a maximum for our function f of x. Now again, at 4, at 4, what is happening to the second derivative? So at 4 again, well, let me write down here. At 4, there is again a point of inflection. Since here, the derivative of this slope changes from negative to positive. Do you see that? So at this point, f prime double prime x is equal to zero. And at this point, f <coughs> double prime x becomes zero. So we again have a point of inflection here, right? So we have a point of inflection at this point also. Got it? And then it moves on, but it's, it's negative uh, rate of change, right? We may see there is, a, and it approaches zero. Right, so it is approaching zero at this point. So at this point, uh, what we see is that it is approaching zero. So it approaches zero as x approaches infinity. As x approaches infinity, uh, f of x is kind of approaching a value, right? So f of x is horizontal. It is approaching a value, which is which is l for us. So there is a horizontal asymptote kind of as we approach this point. 
that's what it seems to be, right? So it's just approaching a value. So that's how we have some idea about the the entire derivative from here, correct? Now, knowing this point, which happens to be the starting point for us, the point is 0, 3, so that's the starting point. If we follow all these things, we can fairly well sketch the graph. We need not re even know what the function is. So the beauty here is, we are just doing entire derivative of this function. And with the help of the geometry of the graph, we are in a position to sketch the function. So what we have learned here is that from 0 to 1, the function actually has negative rate of change. So that means it has to move downwards, right? From 0 to 1. At 1, we have a minimum, right? At 1, we have a minimum. So it moves downwards, and then it has to have a minimum, right? And then there is a point of inflection at 2, right? So at 2, there's a point of inflection. So what we can do here is that we can kind of make a graph like this. And at 2, there's a point of inflection. So it kind of turns. Maximum at 3. So at 3, we are expecting a maximum. So it kind of turns, right? So so I'm not making any y values. We, are, we fairly well don't have any idea about it. But uh, think as if it is going like this. Is it okay? So it turns at 3, giving you the maximum value, point of inflection at 4. So, so it turns the concavity changes from concave down to concave up. Do you see that? And then, I mean, this concavity changes at, at 4. And then, then it moves on. And <clears throat> since it doesn't cross the line, so, so it is always negative, but it's kind of becoming horizontal. So you could say that moves on kind of, kind of like this. Uh, I mean, parallel to x-axis kind of like. So that is how the graph of the function will look like. So this becomes the graph of f, which starts at 0, 3, right? So, so I hope this helps you to understand how to sketch graph of antiderivative of a function. Do you see that? So, so if this is a function, that is the antiderivative. What I wrote was that this is the derivative and that becomes the function. Easy to kind of understand, but it's the same thing. Function, antiderivative, derivative function, right? So it's the same step. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope that helps to understand this beautiful concept. Uh, we'll take a few more videos on this for practice. You can always share and subscribe to my videos. Feel free to post questions and put some likes if you want to. Thank you and all the best.